Hello friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside and this month's back porch porch chat. I was just telling Jackson, he said, are you doing a front porch chat? And I said, well, we're doing a back porch chat. Back porch. We just need to call it a porch chat because come January, we'll be out in the front because we'll need the, the warmth. But it is September in North Carolina and so we mm -hmm. need the shade. So we're, we're on the back porch. Yes. That's the beautiful thing about our porches. We can move with the sun. <laughs> we did good. We did. So this <clears throat> is just a recap video of what has happened in the last month. So for us, that will be August. And it's a very informal, we just go back and forth, we talk about things, and then we answer some of your viewer questions on videos that we have done within the last month. So that is what we're going to do. We both have our coffee. I have my ice, iced coffee, and Jerry has his hot coffee. Yep. Yep. Chilled off a little bit. Yep. There you go. And it has been quite a busy month for us. Yes, it has. It's very busy. I'm, I'm glad we have a probably a good month before we stay home. We can stay home. Yeah, we can stay home and you know, get some things done and get back Absolutely. into some routines. Um, yeah. Hopefully, see some nice cool weather come in. I know because so we have had in August. I think I, it was a record of 90 degree days for the right. Sun. So in August, our family and that we're gonna—that's what we're really gonna kind of cover—are the videos where we were traveling this past month. Yes. We went to New Hampshire uh, to visit Pleasant View Gardens, and then we just got back um, from Mackinac Island with the Grand Garden Show with that put on by Proven Winners. So we're gonna cover a bunch of that. So we don't want to talk you know, like too much about that because most of the videos are from there. Right. Um, but yes, we are people of habit and creatures of just yeah. We like routine, so we're ready to get back into our routine. And uh, we've had, yeah. you know, unique stone came in. We that was a big load of stuff at the nursery that we've been dealing with. Um, we still have a good bit of that stuff left. Yes. Um, On a personnel issue outside, like a business side of Creekside, I've mentioned it in one or two videos before that we have a new member of the Creekside family. Josh has joined us, yeah. and he is not new to our no. family yeah. by any means. He has been a long-time family friend. We actually grew up together, but we really didn't know each other. Uh, he was our my neighbor growing up. He's a little bit, he's a little bit younger than I am, um, and so we weren't in the same grade class at school. Um, but Josh and his wife Elise, they have owned their own. Garden Center, Landscape Company, Mow and Blow, Turf Management. So he is extremely familiar with the whole horticultural world and yeah, so business. If you come down to the nursery this fall and run into Josh. He'll pretty much right. always be here when we're open. Right, and that's, so that's why I that wanted is. to say that. And he's going to be in some upcoming videos. So if you see and hear us talk about Josh, I just wanted you to know who Josh yes. was. Yeah. So, kind of taking that role of nursery manager for yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And Randy. And Randy. Randy is um, a precious friend, too, that we have known for years. She is an amazing gardener. Mm -hmm. I mean, just has the most beautiful, oh, beautiful gardens. So, she is here also um, three days a week because her she has two sweet precious little girls and they are in school so she is working while they are in school so if you come to the nursery on Wednesdays or Fridays you're probably gonna run into Randy she is she knows her stuff so she is not I have more confidence in her I think than she does of herself but she is fantastic so if you run into to Randy that is Randy and Josh those are our two newest um, additions to the Creekside family yes yeah Anything else you want to get into? Oh, I will tell you this because I have had, it's not a specific question in this video, but I've had numerous people ask me this question. Um, mm. An update on Laura's dahlias because oh, if yeah. you remember yeah. back in, it was almost exactly a year ago, Jerry and I went to go visit Laura and Erin and while we were there, of course, Laura's dahlias were in all of their glory and she was kind enough and said, hey, come springtime, I will send you a box of my dahlia tubers. She did. I got them planted. We did a video on it. And so many of you were asking how the dahlias were doing. 
I was very hesitant to share how the dahlias were doing because they just seemed to be taking forever. I've never grown dahlias before, ever. Laura swore to me that they were the easiest things ever. Um, so I'm not sure if it was our climate, if it... Somebody said, do you think they know they're on the opposite west coast or, or the opposite coast? And I said, well, maybe they're just experiencing some jet lag. But talking with a lot of customers at the nursery and then viewers, people have said that it has been a really hard year for their dahlias here in the south. Happy to report when we got back from Mackinac, they had started blooming. So the dahlias are, are blooming. They're coming into their own. And, of course, they are stunning. Uh, so, yeah, so that's an update on those. And we'll, yeah. if you follow social media, I post pictures as a new one develops every day that I post those because they are just gorgeous and exquisite. So that is the update on the dahlias. And I'm going to use my phone because that is where I put all of the questions. questions. Let's go for it. You ready to go for it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So. We are going to start when we did go visit Pleasant View Gardens in Loudoun, New Hampshire. This was titled Fabulous Garden Tour of Pleasant View Gardens. Pleasant View, for those of you that don't know, they are one of the two nurseries in the country that supply all of the Proven Winter Annuals. So if you have Proven Winter Annuals, it either came from Pleasant View Gardens or it came from Four Star in Michigan. Uh, they have, we have a great relationship, of course, with Proven Winters and the folks at Pleasant View. So they invited us up for a second year in a row to come do a garden tour and um, visit gardens. their oh, gorgeous gardens and to visit their production side. So our first question comes from Miss Pamela Perry. She says, can you grow lime hydrangeas in full sun? So the, lime light or I think, little well, lime? Well, she said lime. So I don't know if she meant like lime light or little lime or... One of the two. One of the two. And it really, because Pleasant View, of course, is in New Hampshire, I'm not sure what... That's probably lime light since that's, that we was showed what the lime we showed lights. the lime lights. Yeah. But yes, yeah, so those hydrangeas are panicle hydrangeas, which are considered full sun hydrangeas. Yes. I will say that Pleasant View, New Hampshire is a cooler zone than we are here in North Carolina. We're a zone 7B. We grow ours out in full sun as well, but if you can give them a break in the late afternoon, That'd be good. then it is good. So it really kind of depends on what zone you are. So if you're a zone 5, heck yeah, give them all the sun that you can possibly give them. If you're a zone 7B, 8, or 9, you might want to try to give them a break from the afternoon sun. And in fact, Paul sent us a picture today. Oh, I'll share it with you. Yes. Because it was exactly a, like yes. a month later. Yes, they were much, you know, bigger. And it, I think that it was a hint of pink, maybe. Mm -hmm. You know? I'd have to zoom in. Where I was here, they're, they've, they're done. Well, they've, so what, yeah, yeah, and so that was, you'll notice these lovely dried hydrangeas. So that's what our lime lights and little limes will do is they start that creamy white. They'll turn a little bit of the, um, the green and then they gotta go brown. So these are actually dried hydrangeas from I think last year. Um, but yeah, so we don't get the pink flowers here in, in the south because our nights don't get cool enough. Yep. Next question comes from Deborah Balsam. Would those eco pots keep voles from eating and killing your plant? While we were there, we showcased the new eco pots from Proven Winners and these are biodegradable container so it's that there's zero plastic in them mm -hmm. and they have um, they will break down and compost in the coming years part of that is that you can rip the tabs and just plant the whole pot in the ground if you choose to do that All right. we really recommend not to do that if we you do. find those pots next year when you start to guard you know go and shopping for your new mm -hmm. annuals well, I would recommend not to do that just so that way the, the plant can get its roots on out. I mean, I guess the question about the bowls that, yes, maybe, you know. I think it would it would keep them from getting to the actual heart. Yeah. But they could still chew on the roots. They could chew on the roots that come out the little side holes. Right. And then that, the pot is still going to be in your landscape at the end of the growing season. It's going to take, it takes a couple of years for that pot to actually completely break down. Yeah. Um, so whether you choose to plant in the ground with it, which would be our least preferred method yeah. because you want those roots to be able to get out as much as possible, 
or you put it, you know, chop it up and put it into your compost bin, or even if you do throw it away into, you know, your trash and it goes to the landfill, it will still break down yeah, as opposed to a fast yeah, a, as opposed mm -hmm. to a plastic pot. Yeah. Next question is um, a little bit of a long one, so just track with me here. This is from Trixie Ferguson. Trixie. Trixie. Beautiful gardens. I have a question though. You said that all of their plants are on drip with fertilizer. I'm assuming that means that the fertilizing is distributed throughout the drip system. Does that mean that those breathtakingly beautiful hydrangeas are getting fertilized regularly with water soluble? I am in 8B Texas and my climate is almost identical to your 7B North Carolina climate, except you get a little cooler in winter. This year we've had a bit more rain. I want giant, gorgeous, blooming, all season long hydrangeas. Could this secret be the extra fertilizer? Please, please share your thoughts on this. Thanks. Not necessarily. Trixie, honey, I'm right there with you. I, especially going from New Hampshire and then going to Mackinac, I too would love to have hydrangeas as massive and as gorgeous and as beautiful pure white as they were, especially this time of year. But it's going to be more about the it's, climate. It's the temperature at nighttime yeah. that does all that. And too, that those hydrangeas are on probably a separate drip system mm -hmm. than the annuals. So that way they can control what type of fertilizer they give to the hydrangeas compared to the annuals. Right. So, so it's a separate zone altogether. Right. And I don't know that for sure, but as the grower, you don't want your hydrangeas getting liquid fertilizer. Not like what the annuals would get. No, they have completely different feeding requirements. Mm -hmm. So even though the hydrangeas are, are on a drip system, more than likely it's just it clear could water. Probably just be water. It could be clear water. Yep. So but the the main difference there is our climates. It's the heat and the humidity and the nighttime temperatures. But I would say to you, if you don't have your does she have a drip system? I can't remember. She didn't say. Yeah. So I would put the hydrangea on a drip system. It, likes water. Mm -hmm. Right. Just don't run fertilizer through it. Yeah. For your hydrangeas. <laughs> There's a lot of ifs and buts and caveats in gardening. Next question is um, from Megan Marshall and she says, Jenny, do you know if we could purchase plants there as a home gardener? No. There meaning Pleasant View. Mm. Jerry's very to the point. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, they are wholesale only to growers and garden centers so you cannot as an individual and in person you cannot go and shop at pleasant view so you can go visit the gardens check that out that's cool yes be you inspired know. yes but they don't sell plants they sell to us or to other garden, garden centers, centers. Yeah. yes um next question not really even a question more of a nice comment Ooh. is from tracy miller well, thank you, tracy. yes she says jenny and jerry finally made it to pleasant view a few days ago and oh. oh my word i have never seen anything so beautiful i got goosebumps immediately even though it was about 90 and i was glistening badly Thank you so much for posting your videos. Without you, I would not have known this display garden existed. It is a two hour drive for me and I want mm. to drive back there right now. Um, posted some pics on Facebook and someone responded that they only lived 20 minutes from Pleasant View and did not know that they existed. Yeah. Certainly a hidden gem. Thank you so much. That's correct, yes. So this is why we do these garden tours of different places because it's kind of hard to get the word out sometimes about gardens and especially if they're not on social media or if you're not just kind of plugged in thankfully now we don't know all the hidden gems obviously right. but it is really fun to go and share those with people um and so we are so glad that you enjoyed that and that you were able to share and spread the wonderful word about pleasant view yes yeah and then we have katherine lara Jenny, I just love how you teach us that not everything is going to go perfect, like the wind. Remember when we started and the wind was blowing? Yeah, the wind started blowing on us. We yeah. didn't stop the camera and redo hey, hey, and do a retake. You know, come on. Got to go perfect like the wind, and we just got to go with it. That's right. In gardening and in life, learning how to manage the unexpected is a critical skill. 
P.S. Your shorts are just too cute with that sassy little tie belt. Hope you too enjoyed New Hampshire. Yeah. So that is true. I mean, that is what we, that is one of our main goals here when we do our videos with, I mean, Gardening with Creekside is to show you the good and the bad and the ugly and the successes and the messes. And if we try to predict life, then we're going to be in trouble. So you just kind of go with it. Yeah, we don't do a lot of retake and start camera over and the only time we do that is if jenny really messes up really bad yeah video. or some kind, sort of kind of malfunction of the camera <laughs> yeah we well we've had that before too <laughs> it just shuts off you know decides oh i'm not gonna work yeah but we had a lovely time in new hampshire the whole family went with us so it was us and the kiddos went and we actually did we worked for that day yes. and did a lot of work that day and yep. then we enjoyed some much needed family time and we got to go into boston and do our very first baseball game at yep. fenway park super nice it was super the weather was glorious yeah. thankfully it had, it had turned off. it had turned by Ooh. then and then we went to maine one day because where yep. we were in new hampshire you could go to it was really easy to travel up and down the coast so we did. We had an absolutely fantastic time and enjoyed ourselves immensely. We did. We did. So it was it was fantastic. Okay. So the next video it goes along with that because in the morning we did the garden tours at Pleasant View. And then after that afternoon, we did a behind the scenes tour of Pleasant View Gardens production side. Yeah. We thought there would be some stuff in there, and like they had told us, you know, it's a downtime, and basically sure. what they have in there is their retail ready right. material going out to right. garden centers for the fall. Right. So there was not this. It was not the the production side was not running at its height because, of course, that really happens in January, like January yeah. through yeah, yeah. April. Whenever they I start, would say. I, yeah. Even they may, maybe in, into December, yeah. December through April. Because that's, of course, when they're producing the most amount of annuals and sending them out to growers and garden centers like us. Yes. So, Bet No Tap says, is the bicycle used to get around quickly instead of walking? Not a bad idea. The golf mm -hmm. cart would be great, too. Very interesting facility. So, yes, a couple people commented that, in fact, that there was a bicycle in one of the greenhouses. And they do. A lot of these big them. production greenhouses, yeah. people will use bicycles to get around because it's just, it's so efficient and everything's got concrete floor. There can be, floor. you know, yeah, acres and acres of greenhouses. Right. So. I mean, like acres. And so if you're trying to get from point A to point B, yes, they need them. They do. They use them a lot at Spring Meadow, too. Mm -hmm. I noticed that. Yeah. And they're really maneuverable, right? I mean... A golf cart, maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe I think a, a golf cart is a little more cumbersome. Take yeah, up a lot more. Yeah, and you see some, you know, when they're moving carts around, you see those uh, smaller tractors, you yeah. know, moving stuff, and mm -hmm. it, they're a little more tighter. You they know. are. Yeah. Um, Judy Nicaro, question: How do they clean the floors, especially when there's spent flowers littering the floors? Maybe the hibiscus side doesn't have the flood zone. I would no, think it if it did, the holes in the cement would get plugged up. So I do remember, I do not know about Pleasant View because that's a great question. That is a really good question though. But I do know when we were at Spring Meadow mm -hmm. earlier this summer, because it's, Spring Meadow does Proven Winners shrubs. And so Spring Meadow was saying when they were moving plants around, of course there, there is soil that drops and debris yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So when a bay is empty, then they come through basically like a, um, like what, what do you call those? Well, if you've ever like gone in rink, you to know, Home it, Depot or yeah, those you go in there machines. and they have those machines that are cleaning the concrete, it's that same type of machine. Right. I forget yeah. what they're and called. And they do that there too. I've seen that. But I would say that because there's a flood floors, there's so much pressure of the water that comes up. Any flower petal or thing that were to fall in those holes would just get pushed right out when it floods. And those holes are big. Yeah, I mean, so they're I a, that's not a, a really one to two inch diameter. Yeah. I mean, they're huge. Yeah. But I do know because sanitation in a production greenhouse hmm. is of utmost importance. And you'll remember we were actually having to wear plastic gloves so that we didn't bring anything in. Yeah. So when a bay is empty, that they do go through they clean and it. clean them. Mm -hmm. They have yeah. to. Yeah, they have to clean them and sanitize. But the them. hibiscus floor was a. Flood floor. The it entire was. greenhouse was a flood floor. Yes. 
Yeah. Those were, but those particularly were on drip. Yeah. They weren't using the flood floor uh, for that. They, they were, were on drip. Mm -hmm. Interesting. They were. All right. Sherry Ballington oh, says. A little dingling here. And I know someone forgot to silence their phone. Hmm. Should be at the movie theater. Please silence your phone yes. so as not to disturb the rest of the audience. Yes, we have a new oven coming. Yeah, you want to talk? You want to tell us what happened to the oven? <laughs> Since he brought it up, I wasn't going to bring it up. No, we Side were just note, putting the new handle back on. Or the handle back the handle on and came off, and then when we were tightened down, the the whole glass front shattered. It did. So that was our really fun. interesting. Uh, that was yeah, last night. That was last night, and I was going to cook supper. Yeah, bake supper. So. Anyway. On to the quadrant. So question. the new oven's coming? It's a, it's, yes, it is. it's coming. Tomorrow. Okay, excellent. Mm -hmm. All right. Sherry Ballington uh, says, does Creekside ship to South Carolina? Possibly so. You got me last time. I'm getting you this time. Very good. I love it. Yeah. That, that is a real, very real possibility for next season. Um, if we can get everything lined up quickly, there's a lot that has to be done. We are in the process of doing some research with that again to make the shipping more streamlined and less labor intensive as much as possible especially with the um, labeling and packaging portion of it with the computer mm -hmm. and all that so there's no keystrokes so that way it's very quick input so we have some work to do with that I don't really want to get yeah too no, 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 no. Into so we it. will just keep you updated how about that yes if we yes. begin shipping, we will certainly let you know in plenty of time for you to place orders. Yes. Is that a good will. answer? That is. Very good. Okay. Um, next question is, not really a question again, just more of a comment. Um, CS says, wow, learn so much. Like one of those how it's made videos, but with a delightful personal touch. Hmm. So, I thought that was really sweet. And, and I will say because, of course, when we were just at Mackinac, we ran into a ton of our viewers who have watched you know our videos and so many people commented that they love watching the production side of the videos yes because we are a grower retailer we're not just we're i say just you know you understand what i'm saying here people we're, we're we not, have multiple things going on right we're not you know? just a gardener and i don't mean that in any kind of derogatory yeah. way but right. we're also a garden center where we're selling to people but we're also we grow our plants we and do. so they especially come January, February, March, we do a lot of kind of how it is made type videos on the production side. Yeah, and this season is going to hopefully uh, part of this whole realm of structure and things that we'll have some pretty cool videos with production if all goes well and we get the equipment that we have ordered. <laughs> a long, 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 long time I ago. I really would like to say, but I'm not going to. I, no, you're not. I, you know, but it's just, yeah. So, yeah, so we're waiting on equipment that will help production much easier. But yes. just like so many other things, we are like you, and we are, have been waiting nine months, nine months on this piece of equipment yeah. to be made and delivered to us. And every time we call, we get a different story. We'll say that. All right, Brian Moody, we'll just move on from there says this is a really cool operation they have had no idea places like this even existed and that my friend is why we do these videos yeah, yeah. very good yeah just just show you where they come from and somebody else had commented i didn't i'm sorry whoever said this i should have taken a picture of it but said basically how cool would it be if you could go to see where the mother plants were yes that would be great proven winners <laughs> Send me. I'll, I'll do a video. Oh. And then the last one, I think I think this is the last one. Jacqueline Banks said, love the outtakes. Would love those after every video. So, yeah. So, sometimes if you stay tuned to the very end, you you never know what you might get. Did you even know I did that? What was that? The outtakes for what? The, um... the production video. So, that was when, at the, when we were walking mm -hmm. in, and we were walking past the mums. And I was trying to make sure I had all my facts straight between you and Paul about yeah. how many mums there were. Yeah. And I looked down, and one of the month, the irrigation was going haywire. Yeah. And I made a little silly comment, so I, I tagged oh, okay. that on at the very end. Yes, I, I don't know if I. I don't guess. Guess who hasn't watched the whole video? 
There's a lot going on there, folks. <laughs> that is too funny. Oh, my word. That's hilarious. All right. The next video, we're just going to skip ahead a couple of weeks and go on to Mackinac Island. So, Jerry and I went to Mackinac Island, which is in Upper Michigan. It is this fantastic island that is truly just a step back in time as far as on certain levels of it because Proven Winners does a Grand Garden show every year, end of August, early September. This was the first show to come back after a two-year hiatus because of the pandemic. We were up there, we were, I was a keynote speaker, and so while we were there, of course, we did lots of fantastic videos. So the first video that went out was the Brigadoon Garden Tour with Jack Barnwell. Jack Barnwell, for those of you that don't know Jack, he is an amazing landscaper, has his own YouTube channel, so I'll try to link that, remember to link that in the video description so you can check out all of his videos but he is responsible for designing and a lot of the gardens that were on the garden tour and he has lived there for his entire life off and on so he knows Mackinac better than anybody that I know yeah. so he was the perfect one to give us this tour of Brigadoon Cottage. Brigadoon, this leads into the next question or the first question, Brigadoon was basically destroyed by fire a little over a year ago and it had this incredible rebuild and that is one of the things that reasons why Jack wanted to take us to Brigadoon. So the first question comes from Crystal Pritchett and she says when something like a fire destroys a Mackinac Island home are the homeowners on the hook for the cost of repairs? Are they required to keep the house up to a certain standard? So the owner, the people who own the, the cottages, the houses, I mean, it's just like you or me who own a house. Like I own my house. So if it's destroyed or damaged, then one, you hope you have really good insurance. <laughs> so the insurance, I mean, you know, you get insurance money, but yes, I mean, homeowners are, they own their house just like you and I do. So they have to foot the bill right. for those repairs. Yeah, like Jack said, you know, they have to go through a lot of special permitting to get it done. And right, it was a whole... It, sometimes it could be a detrimental thing, I think. Right, because there was a house fire on Mackinac back in the 80s, and the house was completely destroyed, like beyond repair. Yes. And they were not allowed to rebuild because right. the whole island is actually a state park, a Michigan state park. Yeah, so that's there are, very interesting. It is. So there's certain standards that um, do have to be met. Yeah. And um, but the second part of the question is, are they required to keep the house up to a certain standard? And I, it's not like a homeowners association. I would think so. We don't really have the yeah, details. Really have, but I know. But just going though and looking on the island, not every single house on Mackinac looks is, like Brigadoon. Looks like Brigadoon. No, it does not. So that's why I would say I don't know the official answer to that. But I, my point in it. I don't and think it's this. required to look like Brigadoon at all. No. There were like those are the houses that they are up front on prime real estate close to the water. Right. Those are the diamonds. You know, then they're you know, once you get into the island, into the woods, there are, there's homes that are in the woods or cool little quaint cottages, I guess mm -hmm. you might say. Sure. You know, so it's just different. So I it would is. say mm, I don't know. Yeah. Um, Barbara McLam says, beautiful home and garden, great tour, but what was the North Carolina connection? Kept waiting for that. In the intro, I said that one of the reasons that Jack thought this would be a fun cottage for us to visit was because there was a North Carolina connection. I said it early on, um, but the homeowners who own Brigadoon also live in North Carolina. Yeah. So Brigadoon, they live in Brigadoon during the height of the beautiful summer months, but they have a home in North Carolina as well. So, and they only live like an hour and a half away from us. So. Yeah, you said that. Yeah, yeah. I said it in the beginning. Yeah. It's a, sometimes you just get so excited looking at the video, you forget to hear things. So I just wanted to connect that. Rhonda Schneck, 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 Schneck. Uh, just curious, what is the zone at Mackinac? I looked it up because I was thinking four, but it's a 5A. 5A. So 5A. Yeah. Beautiful, wonderful, cool nights, all that cool air coming off of the lake. Oh, it was glorious. 
Valerie Woodard, how do you mow all of that grass without machinery? So, I think that is a little bit of a misconception about Mackinac. The rule on Mackinac is that you're not allowed to have motorized vehicles. Yeah, there were. But there were and mowers. I don't know about the homeowners. I saw a mower on a golf course. Right. You know, that, and I saw the Grand Hotel with a small mower. Yes. But I did not see any homeowners with a mower. But that, that I but would it say was somehow, also, it but was But those houses manicured. were on the, I mean, the tour. So the, all the grass was yeah. being cut prior to us but getting there. But there are nice push wheel mowers, but right. there were no clippings. I don't know. It's really hard to say. Yeah. But we did, while we were there, we did see yes, two separate, just. Never really heard them. You know, no. But, yeah. We did see on the golf course and yeah. somewhere else, just a regular like lawnmowers like you and I have. Yes. But there's no vehicles. The only vehicles allowed on the island are Ambulance. emergency vehicles. Yeah. In fact, Fire we were truck. sitting there uh, talking with Laura and Aaron, and I'm, <laughs> we're just sitting there, and all of a sudden, I see this ambulance go by, and then it took me for a minute, and I was like, wait a minute. There goes... <laughs> There goes a car. Yeah. There goes an ambulance. Like what in the world? Because you forget it was a that. Weird. <laughs> yeah, that is, that's not normal. It's either foot, bicycle, or horse. Uh, Mar Marla Schaefer says, "Love that great star hydrangea. Where can I get a hold of one? Not a proven winner's plant." So in the tour of Brigadoon, um, one of my favorite plants that really stood out was the Great Star Hydrangea. Marla, I too have been searching where we can find a Great Star Hydrangea, and it is quite elusive. Because if you just, I always say go to Professor Google, I have looked, and there is some nurseries in the UK that have it available. Of course, they don't ship to the United States. Someone has it. So somebody has it because there are, they are all over Mackinac. Yeah, I haven't spent much time looking for it just because I know where we're ordering from, they don't have those. Yeah. So, I, I so it's considered just, a non-branded plant yes. as best that I can tell. That means it's not owned by Proven Winners or Southern Living Plant Company. You know, it's other Monrovia, right? So it's a lack of a better word, it a may have generic a, plant. Yeah, yeah, and it still may have a patent. It may. I'm just saying it's not going to be easy to find. So if you find one, Grab it. <laughs> yes. Because I'm looking for one too. And then More Acres Texas Gardening says, Beautiful home and garden. Did he mention, Jack, if the trees and tall shrubs were just planted also? Hmm. Amazing how large the perimeter plantings are if they are new. Also, does he live on the island full time? Wouldn't you love to see his garden? So we'll take it question by question. I, as far as my understanding, Everything within the yard, minus the lilac trees, are new. And I be, even believe, um, so when we were first starting that video, on my right shoulder were some a row of like arborvitaes between yeah. Brigadoon and the next house. I believe those are new this year. But all of those huge, massive hydrangeas, anything close to the house is all brand new. Um, the ones I know are not new would be like the lilac trees. Yep. So. Yeah, it is amazing how fast they grew. Um, also, well, they it, brought them in from a big nursery. Well, yeah, I mean, they weren't. Yeah, there's folks that grow large trees in the big fields, you know. Right. So, mm -hmm. The trees and the hydrangeas, because yes. the hydrangeas they, were huge. Yeah. Those so two. that probably would have been a what, a, maybe a 15 gallon hydrangea? If not bigger, it if probably not bigger. could be B and B. Yeah. Yeah. Considering Memorial Day, that there was nothing in that garden. Yeah. Yeah. They were big. They were big plants going in. Um, also, does he live on the island full time? So Jack is grew up on oh, not Brigadoon, on Mackinac Island, and so he has lived there for a long, long, long time. He also splits his time though now as an adult in South Florida. He has a company in in Michigan and in Florida. And so he splits his time. Basically, summers are in Michigan, and the winters, fall, are in Florida. Yes. Um, so it's kind of a yes and no answer to that. <laughs> and wouldn't you love to see his garden? Yes, I would. I would love to see what Jack has chosen for himself. That's right. That would be a lot of fun. 
And then Laurie H. says, do they know what the cause of the fire, what, what was the cause of the fire at Brigadoon? A beautiful cottage. It is magnificent. It is stunning. It was a chimney fire. So the um, family had started a fire on the first floor and then something happened in the chimney up way up high in the second third floor and so it caught on fire so it was it was a cause by a chimney fire and I did find a picture online I'll try to show it to you but it was it was devastating for sure I just can't imagine yep. what was going on with that hmm. all right and then we had a garden tour of the Grand Hotel in Mackinac Island and this is where Jerry and that was our first day there our first full day there and we just had fun as we were exploring and finding things we were recording it and sharing it with yeah, you. Yeah we had never been there no. you know so we wanted to no. show you our eyes on the Grand Hotel for the first time. Right yeah, yeah. absolutely so Erica has the first question she said so beautiful is the secret garden to everyone or just guest of the Grand Hotel? No mm -hmm. it's, it's open to everybody yeah. it is it's a public a public space all of their um, you can visit all of their gardens yep. uh, there is a fee if you want to go inside the hotel and you're not staying there but the gardens are open to anybody so you just have to have fun and going and exploring for sure yep. mm -hmm. Jackie says I live in Michigan I've only been to Mackinac twice in my life Laura from Garden Answer was there too did you run into each other I hope you enjoyed our great state of Michigan. We thoroughly enjoyed our visit to Michigan. We have been there quite a few times in the last two years and had a fantastic time. Yes, uh, Laura and I did a keynote address together and we spent quite a bit of time together mm -hmm. doing that. So yeah. yes, we, were, we ran into each other once or twice for sure. And then Green Thumbelina says, Jenny and Jerry, what an unbelievably beautiful place. One day I hope I'll make it to visit there. Jenny, Jenny, did your wonderful mama and daddy go with you guys on this trip or have they been to Mackinac Island before? Just seeing the huge grins on your faces made me wish I was there also. I loved watching this video. Margie. So my mama did go with us, my mama and the kids. Daddy is uh, not much of a traveler, shall we say, and when we knew that we were going to go to Mackinac, to the garden show and be a keynote we absolutely knew right away that the kids would go with us and that my mom would go with us and she thoroughly enjoyed herself this was yeah. our first time for all of us at Mackinac yeah a lot of fun it was crazy experience I mean it just takes a minute to mm -hmm. to get used to it it's all I mean you think it's a small private island and you know but it's pretty busy especially down front close to the water yeah I mean, Main there's, Street. there's just a lot of it's a tourist hustle attraction hustle. for sure yeah you could sit there and people watch for hours yes. if you're like us and like this just to sit back and watch people <laughs> a lot of fun uh, Sandra Williams said Jenny how do they keep the cosmos so short is it the variety mine reach five feet and taller but I would prefer they be shorter can they be mm. cut back one variety I tried this year is seven foot and taller its stalk is like the diameter of a corn stalk and hollow. I don't think that would cut back well. I definitely will not be reaching for that seed packet next year. Sandra, I totally understand. My Cosmos sound like yours exactly. And I'm sure that different Cosmos that you can, the height, but what I think the, the big thing is, climate. is the climate. Because, and I don't know where you are, but if you're in a warm climate like we are, like I direct sowed mine May, and they are every bit of five foot, six feet tall. I too have the big, huge stalks like you do. And I even pinch my back multiple times when they were small so that they would branch out. But it's really the climate because like Jack was saying, they can't plant anything really until Memorial Day because it's so cold there and the wind coming off of the lake is so cold. So Cosmos, if you're putting seed in the ground, then it's gonna take even longer. It is. So I have a feeling it's more about the climate than it is about the variety. Yes. And then um, this was a very popular question. I had 10 million gazillion people ask this question. All right. From Miss Ruth, Ruth Fall. Are you going to share the seminar with you and Laura speaking? Would love to see that. Unfortunately, that was not recorded 
and so there is not a recording out there of our Q&A. They do like to um, kind of keep those events private exclusive for the guest of the show but no unfortunately there is not a recording those clips that you saw in the video were just of like Jerry with his cell phone like right before we you know started our keynote and then he cut it off so there is as far as to my knowledge there is not a recording of the entire speech keynote address yeah. and then this kind of goes back to Jerry's opening statement. Terry Vance, Jenny, the Grand Hotel is huge. Everything at the Grand Hotel is huge. If I had a dollar for every time you said huge, I would have a huge number of dollars. LOL. It's okay. Put a huge smile on my face. Honey, let me tell you. If you go to the Grand Garden Show and the Grand Hotel in Mackinac, let me tell you, you're going to be stumbling all over your words, too, because you start to run out of adjectives really quickly on how to describe all that. Yeah. I mean, it's just, yeah. and I didn't even realize I did it, but a couple of y'all made that comment, and I was like, uh-oh. Because <laughs> it's just, it is just mind-blowing on how to describe all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's why I was saying at the beginning, it was... You know, our first time there, we really didn't know what to expect. We, you know, because we'd only seen decided, videos like y'all have seen videos. Yes, and then we just we did our own video with some cool stuff and yeah, trying to show. And it is called the Grand Hotel and yeah, the pretty, Grand Garden Show for a reason. Big everything is at big at the hotel. Yeah. yeah, everything is big. They don't do things small. Yep. Grand. Maybe that should have been the word I should have used. Grand. Grand. Grande. Grande. And then the next one is from Nadia. I'm not even going to try to, I will butcher your last name. So it's Nadia. Jenny, where is that colorful secret garden at the end of the video? You shot it with your camera phone. Near the greenhouse? Near the shade garden with the flagstone path? Yes. So you must have been there. <laughs> it absolutely is. And we missed it because we explored that space the day before when we, I think, very first got there and we never even saw it. We actually, what, drew us to the secret garden was we were was, uh, well we were on the back side of the trees and i could see through the trees as big at the very end of the video the huge tall bright yellow colorful flowers yeah i could see them through the trees we were talking with a uh, customer or a guest, a guest of the show, of the show mm -hmm. you know that recognized us and we were talking with them and chit chatting and i looked through the trees and there are these bright yellow flowers and i was like I don't know what that is, but we're going to go figure out how to get there. So you had to, and there was no signs, hence the secret garden, but you had to go down this little mulch path and you came around the corner and boom, that is what you saw. It, it was huge. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last video that we did was a behind the scenes look of Mackinac Island. And this truly was where we just shots and stuff and showed you all sorts of fun scenery throughout the trip jerry had had his mostly it was your cell phone oh, yeah mm -hmm. yeah because you're just riding around and or just here and there and you'd see something and shoot the uh the picture there some of that footage that you used in the um middle of the video there right yeah. right um, Marie McGrath said, how did all the amazing flowers and plants get to this island? Did you all bring thousands of plants oh, yeah, as hand question. luggage? <laughs> I live in Australia, I think Australia, I'm going to assume, and never seen so many varieties in one place. Anything that comes to the island is by ferry. So anything that comes to the island is by ferry. Because mm -hmm. it is quite a, I mean, it's a, what, 20, 20 minute ferry ride? So you can't just hop on over there. So everything that you see on that island at some at some point arrived by ferry. Yeah. So, yep. And then Jill Norris said, great tour. I'm so jealous of their beautiful hydrangeas. I'm in zone 8A in North Carolina. Jenny, can I grow Bobo hydrangeas here in full sun, all day sun? Or do you recommend another variety? I need something smallish for the area I want to put them in. So yes, I understand about hydrangea envy because their hydrangeas do not look like my, or my hydrangeas rather at this time of year do not look like their hydrangeas. So Bobo is considered a full sun hydrangea. Mm -hmm. If you can put, make sure if it's on irrigation, 
I just think we have to like with the panicles, with Bobo, Little Lime, Limelight, new Quick Fire Fab, the you know the tidbit Firelight, Firelight tidbit. There's so many different tidbits now. You know, is that to be aware that we're going to have our season, mm -hmm. and but we have a longer growing season than the North. Now, an hour and a half from here is is Blowing Rock, North Carolina. You can go up there and the hydrangeas look like what they do in Michigan, right. you know, and we just have to be realistic on that this time of year, your hydrangea is done. It's tired. Cut it back. It may reflush and it may put out new flowers before. Your panicles. Yes, your panicles before the frost or freeze comes. Yep. I, you know, I just... It's, it's, and this Early is where on, I don't look good. Sure, and I have to remind myself that here in the South, North Carolina, whether I'm a 7B or an 8A, we just have different gardens and different environments than folks in cooler zones. Yep. When we're in the spring and we're so excited and we're showing about planting all of our great stuff yeah, and we've got snow. forsythia blooming and <laughs> our jonquils are blooming, they're under three feet of snow. And so. Yeah. So we don't get to talk about that a whole lot. So just keep that in mind. The other thing I would say is Jerry mentioned it. You might, if you can find fire like tidbit, that is a great, nice, small, petite hydrangea that does great. Is it new on the market within the last year or two? Wonderful, wonderful hydrangea that does really well in the south and can handle the sun. Yeah. So if you can find a tidbit, go for a tidbit. And then Steve L. 2012, your videos have been wonderful have been a wonderful vicarious way to enjoy Mackinac. On traveling there, the determinative question, is there gourmet food? <laughs> At the Grand Hotel, there's gourmet food. There is. And there's a gourmet way of giving the food out <laughs> and having a gourmet way of dressing up. I don't mind getting dressed up, but you know, that's only for certain people. <laughs> I mean, I, any time I can find a way to ditch the tie, I'm going to ditch the tie. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh. So, yes, that's hilarious. So he answered it completely different than what I was going to answer it. But huh. I was going to say that, yes, there definitely is gourmet food at the Grand Hotel. And the Grand Hotel has different, I mean, they have a good little number of restaurants. Oh, they do. In the hotel oh. and around. And around on the outside of the hotel. And that, you know, the Grand attire really only shows up at what is that six thirty. After six thirty in the at, dining. At yeah. Yeah, and you can get in and out of the hotel. Right. You right. know, if you went to town or went to one of their other restaurants, you can right. get back in the hotel. There's also lots of especially downtown, lots of very family friendly, low key, yeah. come as you are, extremely casual, you know, because we ate there many times yeah. as well. But I would say at the Grand. That it is definitely a gourmet meal. There was a gourmet grand meal. Yeah. And the breakfast. The now, breakfast. I, the, dinner, the dinner was lovely. And we, because we had one dinner at the Grand. Yeah. And it was fun. And we had a great time. Uh, I can't eat like that every night. <laughs> My waistline can't eat like that every night. But let me tell you what I do miss. is that breakfast. Yeah, breakfast is nice. Well, anytime anybody start. cooks for you, right? I mean, anytime you don't have to prepare, like, you know, plan yeah. the menu, shop the menu, and cook it, yeah. and somebody brings it to you, it's always a great day. So, yes. yeah. A lot of fun. Um, Book Mom says, what did your mom think of the island? Had she ever been before? Also, did your kids enjoy the trip? So, we touched on this a little bit. Mama was thoroughly in hog heaven enjoyed it immensely had the most fun she ran the kids ragged because she was ready to go 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 and had so much fun with that she had never none of us had ever been before and the kids did really enjoy the trip i did and it's nice too because they're teenagers and they've had lots of i mean we're not talking like toddlers so they could do things on their own if the island is extremely safe so we felt very comfortable with sending them out on bike rides. They did a bike ride one time with Mama around the island. Then they went by themselves on and did a horseback ride because you can yeah. um, do horseback riding. And so they got to explore lots of things and yeah. food. And so it was a great trip for everybody. Yeah, very unique trip very for unique. everyone. 
And then Pepper Spot 805 said, where's the red carpet? So we had, the thumbnail was Jerry and I after one of the cocktail parties. And so all the carpet in the Grand, outside the Grand, is that beautiful red carpet. Yeah. So the stairwell that we were on is the when you, the main stairwell up into... It's in the middle of the hotel. Right. Per se, yeah. Yes, so that was... Yeah, they rolled out the red carpet just for us. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Paula P. A question again about your trip. You mentioned you flew into Detroit and drove to Mackinac City. Did you leave your car there and then take the ferry? Is the ferry just for foot traffic? Down here in North Carolina, we drive our car cars on the ferry, but I know you can't drive a car on Mackinac. Where does one park their car? Thanks. So we had a couple of questions about the logistics because it, Mackinac Island is not the easiest place to get to. Right. So we had a couple of questions on this. So if you are planning on traveling to Mackinac, I know for me it's nice to hear what other people do, so that's why I chose her question. Basically, in a nutshell, what we did is we took a direct flight from Charlotte to Detroit, and then logistically, it made the most sense time-wise and just mentally-wise for us the drive. is we rented a car in Detroit and drove to Mackinac City. That was right at a four-hour drive. Mm -hmm. um, I say it was really easy because I, I wasn't the one driving. <laughs> Jerry drove, but it was. Once we got outside of Detroit, once you got outside, then it was, it fine. was really pretty so then when you get to Mackinac City that is on the mainland and you have a couple of different ferries that you can choose to go with we went with Shepler's so when you get to Shepler's there's signs that say are you staying for the day trip like is this a day excursion or an overnight parking so when you go in you tell them of course we were overnight you go in and they they are super organized and they have got it down to yeah. a T so you just choose overnight parking and you can do overnight parking with them or you can go off-site. Yep. So you have, just once you get to Shepler's, just follow the signs for a day trip or overnight parking. They will tell you exactly where to go. They help unload your luggage. They tag it. So once you unload your luggage from the car, yeah. it was delivered for us at the Grand Hotel and then the yes. kids and mama were nice. at the Iroquois and so the same thing for them. So really organized. Shepler's had it going on. Um, yes, and so so Isabel, I just answered your question too, so Isabel Butler asked basically the same question, but I was just, they're going for their 25th wedding anniversary. So there you go. And so there you go. So that hopefully answers that question as well. And then a storybook finish asks, are powered wheelchairs allowed on the island? Absolutely. So the only thing that's not allowed on the island are actual cars they certainly have electric like they have all the amenities and of you know yes 21st century or power. 21st power and sewer and sewer and internet and cable and internet. right and so there were people with um, the powered wheelchairs so all of that is available you know and allowed it's just that motorized vehicles are not allowed on the yeah. island and then um Oh gosh, I'm just going to say GZ because I will butcher your name, so I'm just sorry. Um, thank you for sharing with us. I live in Southwest Virginia, so seeing you in a sweater, I had to take a double take. Ha ha ha. Honey, yeah. I was in heaven. It was cool. I never put on shorts. I had shorts, but I never put them on. Mm -hmm. I was in pants or a blouse or a sweater, and especially that day, I mean, there was, I think you could tell, quite a breeze coming off of the lake, and it just felt magnificent. Yeah. And then we came back to North Carolina and the humidity. And then our last comment for today is from Nancy Peterson. Just let me say, you and Jerry look amazing all dressed up. We are used to seeing you both working outside in our southern heat. I love this video. The flowers and the music were perfection. Thank you for sharing this wonderful island with us. Beautiful. Very so good. we Thank are you. so glad. Thank you so much for your kind comment. We are so glad that y'all enjoyed it. We wanted to try to capture a little bit of the island and the maybe what hadn't been seen before or, or just different aspects in the island through our eyes and share it with you. So we are so glad that y'all enjoyed those, all three of those videos really yeah. a lot yeah. so we are grateful all right so now that we are officially in september 
what what are we looking ahead for September? What's the uh, coming month? What's going to happen? Just encouraging fall and encouraging fall sales and fall mums and fall weather. Yes, and our pansies and violas. We're going to go and grab some of those from another grower here tomorrow. Yep, I think we're, we're going to take, take you along for the ride on that yes, one. Yes, we are. So we're going to them, which is a little different. We usually don't have the time for that, but these are good friends of ours, and we want to go see their facility and maybe do a quick video, and then um, we're going to bring all that back. We are growing some violas and pansies that won't, you know, the they'll end. be later mm -hmm. into October. This will be the early crop. So for those of you that want to jump on board early, we'll like have me. those. Yep. Because I am ready to rip out summer annuals yes. and bring you know, in the fall. Yeah, it'll be good, you know. Um, so we don't yeah. have any trips planned for September. No trips for September. We're trying We're to get back into the routine of school. Working on projects, trying to finish things up. And then um, getting started on some bigger style projects coming. So there's two really, two or three really big ones that we're going to be doing this fall, winter, and we'll be taking you on for a ride with those three, mm -hmm. as always. As always. Uh, the, for those of you that want to come visit the nursery, we are open Wednesdays through Saturdays. We are open we from. We did switch hours. We so. did switch hours. We just kind of switched it a little bit because now that hopefully we can get out of this heat. Two, so we two. are open from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Wednesday mm -hmm. through Saturday. The final day that the nursery will be opened is Saturday, November the 19th. That is the. And that's the nursery. That's not videos. That is not videos. Y'all know that we will continue I don't know, doing that was videos. That question came up. It was one other time when you talked about that yeah and so that's what i was going to say no we don't stop we don't stop videos the we don't nursery really closes working. for the season we no, just right. keep working right the nursery the retail portion of the nursery will close the saturday before thanksgiving reopen depends on whether mid-february um, but the videos will still come the projects still come we're still working it's just the retail portion is closed those of you who are interested in ordering unique stone you have up till that date to place your custom order for unique stone so if you would like to place a custom order of unique stone that is set to arrive in spring that's all i'm saying i don't <laughs> spring of 2023 then you can email us at the email address below that is orders at gardeningwithcreekside.com we will give you quotes we will send you an invoice you can pay online and we can get you all set up for your unique stone yep Sounds good. Sounds good. All right, my friends, we will see y'all in the next video. As always, thank you so much for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a great day. See you next time. Bye, friends.